The most significant changes in the carbon tool have occurred on the scheme pages, which have been updated to include cells to allow users to input values against the new life cycle stages and modules, which are set out in the second edition of the RICS professional statement. I'll give an overview of the updates to the life cycle stages, specifically captured on the scheme pages. But for additional detail, it is recommended that you refer to the How to Calculate and Body Carbon Guide or the second edition of the RICS Guide. First off, starting with module A0. This is the new life cycle stage for pre-construction, and it has been added to the tool, allowing users to enter any significant pre-construction emissions associated with the project, such as preliminary studies, impact assessments, stakeholder engagement, design and technical studies, site surveys, and more. For most building projects, the pre-construction stage can be assumed to have a negligible emissions contribution and therefore can be taken at zero in most cases. Module A5. This was previously split between A5A, emissions associated with general construction activities, and A5W, emissions associated with material wastage on site. Module A5 has now been split between A5.1, A5.2, A5.3, and A5.4. A5.1 can be found in cells F, 6 to 9, and this is the pre-construction demolition emissions. A5.2, which is in cells G6 to 9, is for the construction activities, including site activities, and also has been picked up in, in column A52, temporary works, and excavation emissions, which is further down in cells in column Q. A5.3 is on-site waste and waste management, captured in column R. And A5.4, which is an optional module where users can enter emissions associated with worker transport. This is typically not known at early stages. Next, module B has now been split between B4.1, which is the replacement of construction products, components and systems, it should then be found in column S, and B4.2, which is only relevant for bridges and involves the replacement of systems or components essential to enabling the function of the piece of infrastructure, but is not considered a construction product. Module C3-4. This has now been broken down into waste emissions, C3-4.1, and waste transfers C34.2. These can be found in columns U and V. Note that C34.2 relates to the transfers of biogenic carbon only. Separating out waste emissions from waste transfers means that the relative real emissions impacts of different end-of-life scenarios of timber products can be transparently and quantitatively communicated. Following the brief overview of the notable changes to the life cycle stages, I will now take you about the larger changes up to the scheme pages. The first change the users will notice is the new overall scheme information box at the top of the page, which is where further information about the project can be added. This is where values for some of the aforementioned modules can be entered, but it's also the place where the GIA for the project or scheme is now entered. As mentioned previously in the project info tab video, these cells are impacted by the selection of whether or not the building is new build and not involving the demolition or tension of an existing building on the site. The GIA has been split between demolished, retained and new areas. The note that is worth keeping in mind is that the new area refers to the GI or functional area of both an extension to the structure and to a new build. 
The demolished GIA value is used to calculate the total A5.1, which is multiplied by the A5.1 factor, whilst the sum of the retained slash new values is used to calculate A5.2. These values also enable the calculation of the embodied carbon emissions associated with the retained part of the structure and the new build extension in, in addition to the whole project. We will touch on that later. An uncertainty factor which can be changed at the top of the scheme page is now applied to the results to account for the uncertainty in calculating embodied carbon which can depend on for example the design stage of the project or the material assumptions. This factor is defaulted to 15%. Next to the uncertainty factor at the top of the scheme page is the end of life scenario where the user can select between business as usual, good practice or best practice in the deconstruction scenarios. This selection will affect the calculation of C1, which is down in B4748. This is because the C1 value is calculated as a percentage of A5.2, with the percentage determined by the end of life scenario selected in the box. Business as usual is 25%. Good practice, 30%, and best practice is 50%. And this is of the construction activities missions. The final box at the top of the scheme page is where the secondary functional unit entered on the project info tab will appear. It is here the user can enter the quantity of the secondary functional unit, which then provides results the project down in this corner. The final addition to the top of the scheme page is the addition of the reset default values button. Selecting this will reset the default values for A5.1, A5.2 and the uncertainty factors. It will also reset any empty cells from column G, the component lifespan, to their original state. If there is a value in the cell already, this will need to be deleted before it can be reset. So going down the scheme page, we get to the results. As per the previous version of the tool, the results can be found below the input cells. Written next to whole project results, the user can see results for including decarbonisation and excluding decarbonisation. This is a new addition to the tool which accounts for the likely future decarbonisation of structural materials which will impact life cycles stages B and C. What this means is that a simplified reduction of 50% is applied to B4.1 and B4.2, C1 to C2 and D1 emissions. The excluding decarbonisation results do not include this simplified reduction. Note that excluding slash including decarbonisation results are applied to each of the whole project retained and new build extension results. If you are doing a new build project which involves no demolition, you will only see the whole project results and not see cells for or results for retained and new build extension. Finally, looking down further to the charts and infographics. There are no major changes that have been made to these charts and graphics included in this tool. Um, and this is true also for the comparisons tab. Some of the charts have legends though have been updated to match with the latest industry guidance and targets, which including this, the element emissions breakdown chart, which has been aligned to Rick's professional statement version two.